Assalamu alaikum. This is the second presentation of the series of short presentations to explain how the sample size is calculated in different scenarios. In this presentation, we'll go through calculating the sample size required in single group research with no control groups, just one single group of patients, the data, but the data is dichotomous rather than continuous. It's like alive or dead, ratios like the rate of bleeding, rate of complication, percentages of infection or percentages of success rates and things of the sort. The sample size would influence two important statistical properties. The first is the precision of our estimation. How accurate is our estimation of, for example, the percentage of intratympanic fascial nerve canal dehiscence in a number of skulls or a number of surgical specimens. Uh, the percentage together with the margin of error and the level of confidence would reflect this precision. The higher the sample size, the better the precision would be. The other important aspect is the power of the study to draw conclusions, to uh, test a hypothesis. Like if we are trying a Newton selectomy technique and measuring the rate of bleeding with the standard uh, method and the new technique and comparing the two rates together, uh, if we have a good uh, study power by increasing the sample size, we'll be able to see a difference between the two techniques if that difference actually exists. So starting with the first thing, the precision of our estimate. How accurate is our estimate of the percentage of the intratympanic fission nerve canals that were actually found dehiscent during our study? At the end of the study, we would produce a report with these three figures in it. The actual outcome, this is the number of the fission nerve canals that were found to be dehiscent during the study. Uh, X percentage, say 20% or 25% or whatever, plus or minus the margin of error of our uh, estimation. And this is something that we set at the beginning of the study. We set out this margin of error and we set it out to be low enough uh, so that with a very with a small margin of error, you would have more um, a precision, but also practical to because if you reduce this margin of error to a very low level you would need more uh, specimens to do your test the same applies to the confidence level you would want to set something like 95 percent this is high enough and it's also adequate and and you would find to find out the correct answer a 95 percent confidence interval for example would mean that if this study is repeated 20 times, 19 out of the 20 studies, that is 95% of the studies, would have the correct answer within its margin of errors. So this is a high level of confidence, and this is a, a, a fairly narrow margin of error. Now, the equation to obtain this is this, uh, the number required, the size, the size of our sample, would be related to three th things. We start with the Z. This is the uh, Z score of the level of significance that we have chosen. If we have chosen 95% confidence in a level, then the Z score for this will be 1.96, for example. The E would reflect the margin of error. And this would be 5%. And the, the P is the percentage of the population with or without the uh, efficient nerve dehiscence. And obviously, we don't know these figures before doing the study. We are setting the study actually to find out the actual proportions. But we can have a rough estimate or a rough guess about the population the percentage of, the, of those who will have a dehiscence or not from previous studies, from the literature or from a pilot study. If we have this um, information, this would help. You can say if you find 
uh, from a pilot study, for example, the 30% of the specimens have a dehiscent facial nerve, then P would be 30, and 1 minus P would be 70, and multiplying them together, uh, then it is, is, is one step in for obtaining the uh, sample size. If we don't have that information at all, and there had no, no previous studies and no pilot studies, then we assume that the percentage is 50%, with the hissens and 50% without the hissens. The advantage of this is that this will produce the highest possible uh, number that will be required, uh, so that that would be a very conservative way of obtaining the correct answer. So let's plug in the figures in this equation. The P, because we don't know, would be 50%. And the 1 minus P would be also be 50%. So that's 0.5 here. And 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5 again. Multiplied by the Z score for the level of confidence, which is 95%. So that is 1.96 in here. Divided by the margin of error, which is 5%. So that's 0.05 here all squared at the end uh, so this will bring out this figure 384.16 so you need at least 385 cases specimens or patients uh, as a sample size to obtain the required information with a margin of error of five percent and a confidence level of 95 percent Moving now to the next scenario. In this scenario, we would want to compare results obtained from a single group study, a proportion or a ratio from this single group to a known standard. In this study, there is no control group because this is a single group study, but we compare our results to a known standard, an accepted level that has been published and accepted. For this, we have a new equation, and this equation for estimation of the sample size would depend on three th things here. The first, the z-score of the level of significance that we set at the beginning of the study. If we choose a p-value less than 0.05, this means that we have a level of significance of 95%, for example, for a two-tailed study. The second factor is the power of the study. Uh, how much are we able to tolerate a type 2 type uh, of error? It's usual to have a power of the study of about 80 to 90 percent uh, power. If it is 80 percent, the Z score will be 0.84. If it is 90 percent power, the Z score will be 1.28. And uh, we add these two Z scores and divide them by the um, effect size. How different are the results from our study from the known standard? The more different it is in terms of how many standard deviations between the two averages, uh, the more the uh, effect size. The closer this is to the known standard, the smaller is the effect size. And the effect size would be calculated from this formula, which we'll come to it in a second. So this is an example of comparing a percentage, a rate, a ratio, or a proportion that we have obtained from a single uh, sample study with no controls to a known standard that has been published and accepted as a standard. We are comparing the uh, post-operative bleeding of a Newton selectomy technique, for example, to a known standard of the post-operative um, bleeding in tonsillectomy operations. And for this study, we choose a p-level of less than 5% and a power of 80% and we want to detect a difference of 5%. So these are the figures that we are going to plug into the uh, formula. And this is the formula to find out the required sample size for such a study. The required sample size for this study 
would depend on the p level that we have chosen the five percent the less than uh, 0 0.05 the power that we have chosen which is 80 percent translated into a z score divided by the effect size and to um, calculate the effect size we have this formula which depends on the expected proportion that we uh, expect to find in our study or that we have find in a pilot study compared to the known standard so we start with this the z score for the uh, level of significance at 95 percent is uh, 1.96 this will be plugged in here and the z score for the uh, chosen level of uh, power 80 percent will be 0.84 now to estimate the effect size we want the known standard this is the p0 and say this is 10 percent expected rate of post-operative bleeding in tonsillectomy and this is the standard that has been published repeatedly um, the new operations claim that it would uh, reduce this to 5%. So that's the P1, uh, the, the other uh, uh, proportion. And the effect size from this would be the P1, the 5%, and the, the difference between the P1 and the P0, that's the difference between 10% and 5%. And this would be 5%, uh, this is 0.05 uh, divided by the square root of p1 which is five percent multiplied by one minus five this would be the 0.95 percent and these um, the product of uh, these two would be would obtain the square root of it and divide the uh, difference between the two proportion by that square root and the effect size obtained was 0.23. We plug this into the equation plus the 196 here and the 0.84 here. And so that the equation now with the figures plugged in, the required sample size would be 148.1. That is to say the minimum number of patients required for this study to obtain a difference of 5% between the rate of bleeding and have a level of significance less than 5% and a power of 80% would be 149 patients. We've been through formulas for um, different scenarios in which the population was not known or was deemed to be finite or very high. Um, th this is a new scenario where we know the number of the population say we are uh, setting up a study to find the proportion the percentage of workers in a factory who have developed sensory neural hearing loss the uh, factory workers uh, are say five so this, this is a known entity you can know that the fact the workers here are five thousand ten thousand or whatever and the same applies for a study for uh, estimating the hepatitis positive uh, students in a college the the number here would be finite rather than infinite or unlimited population so we need a new formula and this new formula would depend on two things would depend on the estimated number or the sample size if this if the situation was uh, unlimited like the previous two examples we just calculate the required sample size assuming that the population is unlimited with the usual formula and from this uh, we put this in here and then divided by a certain other formula and because we are dividing the number for unlimited population by something else by a, another quantity this number will be reduced so rather than have the whole estimated number for the unlimited population you would have a smaller number we'll see that in the next so in this example we are uh, starting to study the percentage in a finite uh, population like workers in a factory or students in a college we start by estimating the sample size required in the, this situation with uh, assuming 
just assuming that the population is infinite, like the original equation, uh, with the margin of error, with the level of significance and the proportions. And once we have obtained that figure, say it is 385, uh, then we use that figure, we divide it by a certain other entity to get out the required sample size for the finite population for the uh, known population of 5,500, whatever. Uh, so if the finite population is 5,000 uh, and the uh, estimated sample size for the infinite population is 385, we plug this into this equation. Um, this is the sample size for the infinite population divided by a certain entity in here. This entity, so we put the 385 in here. This is the required sample size for the infinite population divided by 1 plus, um, we use that this figure, 385 minus 1, divided by the number of the finite population. That's the n. Uh, this is the 5,000. And because we are dividing the 385 by this formula, this we expect the 385 to be reduced. And this is what happened. We obtained a 356.48. That is to say 357 patients are required for the finite population of 5,000 rather than 385 for the infinite population. By this way, end the second uh, short presentation on estimating the sample size. Both uh, two previous presentations were about a single study uh, group. Um, the next presentation will cover the estimation of the sample size for two groups uh, studies. Salam alaikum.